Morning, Johnny Walker here from Walker Saw Shop in the Nile BC, Canada. I'm uh, just going to show you some stuff on the Echo 7310. Oh, geez, I got music playing in the background. I forgot that's not allowed when you do videos. Let's get a Led Zeppelin though. Give me a break. Okay, it's off. Sorry. Hopefully, <laughs> background music didn't bug anyone there. It's Donnie Walker <clears throat> talking the. Um, CS-7310 PW, the new Echo 73CC saw. Exactly CCs, 73.5, so a couple CCs, more than a 372, and the same as a 462. So this is the cylinder kind of showed you before I just had this one machined on the bottom I've got uh, four other ones being done right now I'm gonna retime this after I've machined the bottom off for my squish and just see where my numbers are real thing I wanted to show you with some good some nice features on this saw that I see that hopefully will stand up well uh, a lot of air air movement through this starter shroud it's a uh, pretty big and open Hope it doesn't get clogged up with too much of the fines and and crap out there in the woods when I get it out to the loggers and test it. Nice cooling fan uh, flywheel, really nice set of fins on it. It looks like it will move a lot of air. Great system. They even have like a uh, an air sort of injection system as well, forced air up into the air intake area, which is good. That works really well on Husqvarna's and the John threads. And some of the new stills have that that system too. So the, it takes a lot of the debris off the flywheel and dirt coming in through the starter and blows it across for cooling of the, of the fins. And then it takes a set some fresh air off the side of the, the flywheel and it shoots up into the air intake for uh, more air in, in, into the motor. It seems to work well on other models. So see how this one works. It has a digital um, ignition. I can't remember the exact rev limiter, limiter to it, but when we uh, get this back together with all the fancy stuff I'm gonna do, you'll see. I'll tell you that then. Nice chain brake, very nice heavy duty uh, plastic chain brake. Looks like it would stand up pretty good. Hopefully it's not too brittle. I don't know what the capacity of the gas and oil is. I'm sure it tells in the owner's manual. Typical uh, old style switch, just an old toggle switch. Never see them really go wrong. Same sort of one that they would used years ago, like on a 2100 or, or Husqvarna and stuff, eh? Or old, old stills. <clears throat> the crankshaft looks pretty well built. Your regular half lobe type one. What's cool on the top of the rod is actually got three, three oiling holes for the top bearing to keep it nice and cool. Keep some nice fresh oil and gas in there. Um, some of the models of Echoes have the thrust washers up top. Thrust washers are the, are the spacers between the rod and, and the piston. Pain in the butt. Yamaha go-kart engines were like that and some different motors years ago where you'd have to have a little guide. And actually I made a little guide for the 590s and 620s. I took an old um, wrist pin and cut it. And I, I put it into the top of the rod with the bearing, with the washers. Then I can slide the the piston over and then push the pin through and it pushes the guide out and then your wrist pins in. Pretty easy to do, but it's a good tool to make. I, I, made, I made my own. You can't buy it from Echo because if you've ever tried putting the 590 and the 620 pistons on, on the rods, you got to be a magician and just get those washers lined up just right. They fall down and get back up. The other problem with the 590s and 620s is getting that together like that is the wrist pins are so tight in the piston. So now you, you almost got to light up, you got to push it and you can't get it pushed. So, and then the washer falls down, pain in the butt. So make a little jig like that. I can even, sh I'll even show you at the other shop, maybe next time I do a 590 or 620. Actually, I do have a 620 coming up to build for a guy. So we'll do that then. Anyways, nice that they got rid of those. So this is just the basic design like everyone else has now. Um, what else on it? Clutch. Clutch looks really good. Nice beefy clutch. Lots of material. 
good sized springs to it. That's where I see a lot of wear on the new 500 stills in the 462. The clutch drums are so thin. Like the, just the walls on them are super thin. And there's, if you look in your, in the shop manual, it tells you a wear factor and you should be changing it. I've already switched out two or three 500 clutch drums and a couple 462s and they shouldn't wear that quick. I remember old, old school 066s, you know, last forever. Even Husky clutches go ahead drum, last the life of the saw. It's kind of a bummer. Just they're all trying to lighten stuff up too much and it ends up costing us more out of our pocket and less, uh, less profit we make it work, right? Yeah. So just watch that wear factor on the stills. And, um, you know, if the thing starts moving around like that, you're going to have uh, chatter. So you are so you have acceptable to the clip coming off more, uh, the bearing crapping out on them because they use a, a, a plastic cage bearing, which is cool on this Echo because it's a nice metal bearing, no plastic. And you also erects the oiler gear and your chain flies off easier too. So yeah, watch that stuff on the still. Okay, back to this echo. Sorry about that. Uh, oiler, oiler. I don't know how it puts out. We'll find out when we get the 32 on it. Mounts. I don't see in the parts breakdown that there's any different ones, softer, harder ones like like soft companies um, have. Eh? It's like Husqvarna's. You know, the 372 heated versions come with the, the regular standard soft mounts, and the, the full wrap. Um, non-heat come with the blue and white that i talked to you about the better mounts the bit harder ones they stand up better so we'll see how these ones work when we get a long long bars on them and um and test them out i do have some uh bigger felling sparks from gordy uh west coast saws and uh, the muffler mod i'll do myself um they're like i said they're pretty open on these but i i will see what is going to suit the logger the best and to keep in compliance with the forestry regulations with the screens. You'll see that when I'm done at the end here. So yeah, I'm gonna get this together now and just check my um, my squish. Now that I've shaved some down on that, I'm not gonna tell you yet. And uh, I'm even gonna uh, put a timing leg on it and see where they're, we see where they're, um, they've set their ignition timing on this um, later on in the other shop. I don't have that here. I just wanted to give you a rundown on this saw. I think it's going to be good uh, from what I've heard down from a few other people that have already tried them and modified them. Um, they're quite happy with them. So we'll just see how they stand up in our, in our conditions here up on the wet coast. It's, uh, I would say the logging conditions in BC is, is, is the worst in, in the world. You know, the size of the wood, the underbrush all around you, the weather, the rain, like, well, the rain's the weather. That's the big factor, you know, the, the uh, you know, elevation changes, you know, like this is a carburetor saw. So, you know, if he's running close down to the beach, you know, he goes up higher, it's going to run rich. So he's going to need to lean it out. And if he leans it out, then he comes back down, you know, could run hotter. But most of these digital, digital ignitions from having a rev limiter, you can set the carburetors pretty decent. That'll run at every elevation pretty decent most guys it's, it's perfect for and that's one thing about auto tune and mtronic okay think about that it ch it never changes it'll it'll work perfect at, at sea level and work perfect at uh, 2000 feet up hopefully if it's running right a friend of mine had a good story he uh, does logger sports darren dean he's on the husqvarna um, h team uh, he also does the shows west coast logging shows goes all over North America and puts these logging shows on. But he went somewhere to like Denver, Colorado or something, somewhere really high up and he, he gets there and none of his racing saws that he puts the show on with to make cuts to, you know, it's all about noise and, and the sh sh chips flying at the logger show, eh? Well, his, his, his hot saws wouldn't run. They, they would run so rich, they're just bleh. The only thing ran was an auto-tuned Husky. I think it was a 572 or a 562, it outcut everything because it actually changed itself for the elevation and then it ran perfect. So think about that, eh? Yeah. Anyways, I got to get at it. I got um, a 500, 572, and a 372 today, today to do. And a 395 that's been sitting around for a while, but it's like brand new for Tom Walker. Chicken plucker. Hey, Tom. I'll get this done for you this week and uh, get it back to you. I've already done a 3120 for him. He lives on the mainland over at Vancouver. 
and uh, I guess he's going to use this for bucking big stuff or maybe some milling smaller wood versus using his 3120. So anyways, yep, Tom, we'll get that over to you. Okay, so keep your saw on. Have a great day. Check out the walkersawshop.com online store. We're doing really well with it lately. Um, just got more of those um, um, pro, pro sizers. The laser lights that you put on the side of the handlebars you can cut your cut your laces of your, your firewood to the right length and i'll do a video of that at the shop i just finally got some new logs there to uh, do testing of some saws so i'll put that one of those on my saw um, later today and show you guys how exactly how to set it up and how it works so hey keep your saw on the wood stick in the ice rub on the road have a great week we'll talk to you real soon bye